SpaceX just did something so crazy that NASA officials are calling emergency meetings. Ship 37's new Crab Claw technology isn't just different. It's so revolutionary that it could make NASA's entire refueling program obsolete overnight. But why is SpaceX keeping the real purpose secret from everyone, including their own team? Let's dive right in. Here's what NASA engineers saw that made them call emergency meetings at 2 a.m. When Ship 37's transport stand arrived at Mega Bay that morning, something was different. The Crab Claw system wasn't in any of NASA's blueprints. It wasn't in any aerospace textbook. It shouldn't have existed. But there it was, four metallic arms that just solved the most dangerous problem in space exploration. And NASA, they had no idea SpaceX was even working on it. Think about trying to connect a garden hose while you're both falling down a cliff. That's orbital refueling, according to every space agency on Earth. NASA has spent over $2 billion developing massive robotic arms and complex docking systems. Technology so complicated, it requires millimeter-perfect alignment between two spacecraft hurtling through space at 17,500 miles per hour. SpaceX just proved all of that was unnecessary. Here's the mind-blowing part. While NASA's system needs perfect alignment, we're talking about the precision of threading a needle in a hurricane. SpaceX's crab claws can grab and adjust on the fly. Each arm moves independently, automatically compensating for the micro-movements that happen when two spacecraft try to connect in zero gravity. But why is NASA really panicking? It's not just about refueling one rocket. If SpaceX can refuel starships in orbit this easily, they don't just win the moon race. They completely rewrite the rules of space colonization. Remember when Ship 36 exploded in that spectacular fireball? Boeing would need 18 months to recover from that kind of failure. NASA's space launch system? They've been fixing minor issues for over a decade. SpaceX went from explosion to launch ready in exactly 40 days. Here's what most people don't understand about SpaceX's secret weapon. While other companies see explosions as catastrophic failures, SpaceX treats them as the world's most expensive data collection. Every piece of twisted metal, every failed sensor reading, every millisecond of flight data gets fed into AI systems that can spot patterns human engineers might miss for years. The morning after Ship 36 explosion, SpaceX engineers weren't mourning. They were already designing Ship 37's improvements. That crab claw system? It wasn't supposed to exist until Ship 40 or later, but the explosion data revealed something unexpected about fuel transfer dynamics during ascent, something that forced SpaceX to accelerate their timeline by two years. NASA executives are calling this impossible engineering. But here's the twist. SpaceX didn't just recover from failure. They used it to leapfrog ahead of everyone else by decades. We're not just behind, we're playing a completely different game. That's a direct quote from an unnamed NASA official to industry insiders. The Artemis program's entire refueling timeline just became obsolete overnight. Let's talk numbers for a second. NASA's current plan requires 16 separate Artemis launches to establish a lunar base. Each launch costs $4.1 billion. That's $65.6 billion just to get the basic infrastructure in place. SpaceX's Starship with orbital refueling? They could accomplish the same mission with three launches at roughly $300 million total cost. That's not just better, that's 200 times more cost effective. But here's what's keeping NASA leadership awake at night. SpaceX isn't just building rockets anymore. They're building the entire infrastructure for space civilization. Those crab claws don't just refuel ships. They can transfer massive cargo loads, connect habitat modules, even construct space stations piece by piece. NASA just realized they've been building the right flyer while SpaceX designed the Boeing 747. Let me explain this crab claw system in terms that'll blow your mind. Traditional spacecraft docking is like trying to park two cars while both drivers are blindfolded and the parking spaces are moving. NASA's solution? Build a $500 million robotic valet service. SpaceX's approach? Make the cars smart enough to park themselves. Each of the four crab claws contains more computing power than the entire Apollo program. They use real-time AI processing to calculate micro-adjustments 1,000 times per second, faster than human reflexes, 
more precise than any mechanical system ever built. But here's the genius part. While NASA's system breaks if any single component fails, SpaceX's crab claws are designed with fourfold redundancy. If three claws fail completely, the fourth can still maintain connection and complete the refueling process. This isn't just impressive engineering. It's a fundamental shift in how we approach space operations. NASA builds systems that need perfect conditions to work. SpaceX builds systems that work despite imperfect conditions. While everyone's focused on Ship 37's static fire tests, SpaceX is already three moves ahead on the chessboard. Those routine payload bay tests on Ship 38, they weren't routine at all. Industry insiders believe Flight 10 isn't just another test flight. It's the setup for Flight 11, the mission that demonstrates full orbital refueling capability for the first time in human history. The evidence is everywhere if you know where to look. Ship 38's specialized cryogenic modifications, the new tank farm upgrades at Starbase, even the specific orbital trajectory SpaceX filed with the FAA. Everything points to one Earth-shattering conclusion. They're about to prove that unlimited-range spacecraft aren't science fiction anymore. NASA thought they had until 2030 to figure out lunar refueling. SpaceX might demonstrate it by October 2024. NASA just realized they've been preparing for the wrong war entirely. Their massive Artemis infrastructure, the Gateway Lunar Station, the complex multi-launch architecture, the intricate orbital rendezvous maneuvers, all of it becomes unnecessary if SpaceX can refuel starships anywhere in space. The political implications are staggering. Congress approved $93 billion for Artemis based on NASA's assurance that they were humanity's best hope for returning to the moon. What happens to that funding when a private company does it faster, cheaper, and with reusable hardware? But there's an even bigger concern that has space agencies worldwide calling emergency strategy sessions. SpaceX's orbital refueling capability doesn't just enable moon missions. It makes Mars colonization economically viable, opens up the asteroid belt for mining, and turns the outer planets from impossible destinations into routine destinations. NASA has been planning human Mars missions for 2040. With unlimited range capability, SpaceX could be establishing permanent Mars colonies by 2030. While SpaceX celebrates their revolutionary breakthrough, NASA is dealing with their own technical nightmare. Crew 11's static fire test failed at T-57 seconds due to what they're calling a minor sensor malfunction. But here's what the official reports won't tell you. NASA's aging systems are showing critical stress fractures compared to SpaceX's rapid innovation cycle. While SpaceX evolves from explosion to breakthrough in 40 days, NASA can't even get a routine crew mission off the ground without delays. The Dragon capsule flying its sixth mission tells an even more concerning story. NASA originally certified these capsules for only five flights maximum. They're literally pushing their hardware beyond design specifications while SpaceX is already testing technology that makes current systems look like steam engines. The contrast couldn't be more stark, and the timing couldn't be worse for NASA's credibility. Here's where this story takes a twist that nobody saw coming. All those complaints about Starlink satellites interfering with radio telescopes? They're missing the real story by miles. With over 9,000 satellites in orbit, SpaceX hasn't just built an internet service, They've constructed the most extensive space-based infrastructure network in human history. But what if those satellites aren't just communication relays? What if they're navigation beacons for deep space missions, communication waypoints for interplanetary travel, even potential refueling depots for spacecraft heading to Mars? While everyone argues about radio telescope interference, SpaceX is quietly building the GPS system for interplanetary civilization. And by the time anyone realizes what's happening, the network will be too essential to shut down. Ship 37's static fire tests over July 30th and 31st aren't just validation runs. They're the final checkboxes before SpaceX attempts something that will fundamentally change space exploration forever. If these tests succeed, we're looking at back-to-back-to-back -back -back launches that could shatter every space industry record. Ship 37 in early August, Ship 38 in late August, and potentially Ship 39 by October. That's not just ambitious. It's revolutionary on a scale that makes the Apollo program look like a hobby project. 
NASA's fastest launch cadence, four space shuttle missions in one year, and that was considered a miraculous achievement. SpaceX might launch three starships in two months, each one capable of carrying more payload than the entire space shuttle program combined. NASA has been playing checkers while SpaceX has been playing 4D chess. While NASA focuses on landing a few astronauts on the moon for a week-long camping trip, SpaceX is building the infrastructure for permanent human settlement across the solar system. The Crab Claw system, orbital refueling, the Starlink network. These aren't separate projects competing for budget and attention. They're integrated components of a master plan that makes interplanetary civilization not just possible, but inevitable. Think about what unlimited spacecraft range actually means. Mars becomes a six-month commute instead of a 26-month journey requiring perfect planetary alignment. The asteroid belt becomes a mining district instead of an impossible destination. Jupiter's moons transform from science fiction concepts into potential research outposts and refueling stations. We're witnessing the exact moment when space travel transitions from government expeditions to routine commercial operations. The Crab Claw system isn't just a refueling mechanism. It's the skeleton key that unlocks unlimited range for human spacecraft. NASA's leadership understands the implications perfectly. They're not just losing a technological race. They're watching their entire organizational purpose get redefined in real time. Government space agencies might evolve into regulators and researchers, while private companies become the builders and operators of humanity's interplanetary infrastructure. The question was never whether SpaceX would succeed with orbital refueling. All the technical evidence suggests they've already solved the fundamental engineering challenges. The question is, how quickly can they scale up production to build the fleet that makes Mars colonization economically viable? Based on their 40-day recovery from catastrophic explosion to launch-ready status, the answer might be faster than anyone in government or traditional aerospace ever thought possible. And that's exactly why NASA called those emergency meetings at 2 a.m. So here's what just happened in front of our eyes. SpaceX didn't just move a rocket to a launch pad. They demonstrated that the impossible timeline for human space colonization just became the inevitable timeline. While we've been debating whether humans will ever live on Mars, SpaceX quietly solved the one problem that made it economically impossible. The Crab Claw system isn't just about refueling rockets. It's about making space travel as routine as international flights. But here's the question that'll keep you up tonight. If SpaceX can go from explosion to revolutionary breakthrough in 40 days. What else are they working on that we don't even know about? What other impossible problems are they solving right now in those Starbase hangars? The space race isn't between countries anymore. It's between those who believe in making humanity interplanetary and those still arguing about whether it's possible. SpaceX just proved who's winning. What do you think happens next? Drop your wildest predictions in the comments, because at this point, even the craziest guesses might not be crazy enough. And if you want to stay ahead of the next space revolution before it shocks the world, hit that subscribe button. Trust me, you won't want to miss what comes next. Shocked SpaceX engineers just admitted their $3 billion Starship is a Mars death trap. It arrives with zero fuel to get home. But here's the mind-bending twist. A tiny mini version weighing 6x less can somehow complete the impossible mission that defeated the giant. What did they discover that changes everything? Let's dive right in. Picture this. You're Elon Musk sitting in a boardroom at SpaceX headquarters, staring at computer simulations that just shattered your Mars dream. Every single scenario shows the same horrifying result. Your $3 billion starship arrives at Mars, lands successfully, but becomes a 150-meter-tall gravestone for its crew. The engineers delivered the brutal truth. Starship physically cannot return from Mars. Period. Here's the math that broke SpaceX's confidence. A fully loaded starship weighs 5,000 tons at launch. Imagine 2,500 cars stacked on top of each other. After burning through 4,200 tons of fuel just to escape Earth's gravity well, 
only 800 tons remain. But here's the killer. Mars is 225 million kilometers away, and that journey alone consumes nearly everything. But wait, it gets worse. When Starship finally reaches Mars after six months of travel, it faces what engineers now call the death paradox. Can you guess what that is? Earth's thick atmosphere acts like a giant brake pad, naturally slowing spacecraft down during landing. Mars? Its atmosphere is 100 times thinner, like trying to stop a freight train with tissue paper. This forces Starship to fire its engines at maximum power during landing, burning massive amounts of precious fuel. The result is terrifying. By the time those landing legs touch Martian soil, Starship's fuel tanks are virtually empty. The crew has successfully arrived, but they're already dead. They just don't know it yet. Think about that for a second. You've spent $10 billion, risked everything, traveled for six months through the vacuum of space, and the moment you achieve your dream of reaching Mars, you've simultaneously signed your own death warrant. How's that for irony? SpaceX's original escape plan sounds like something from a Hollywood thriller. Build a fuel factory on Mars. But here's what they didn't tell you about this simple solution. The process requires extracting carbon dioxide from Mars' paper-thin atmosphere and combining it with water ice buried beneath the surface. Through a complex chemical reaction called the Sabatier process, these materials theoretically produce methane and oxygen, rocket fuel. But here's the part that'll make your blood run cold. This fuel production takes 500 continuous days. That's 16 months of everything going perfectly on a planet where dust storms can last for months and temperatures plummet to minus 195 degrees Fahrenheit. What if the reactor fails on day 300? What if a dust storm damages the CO2 collectors? What if they can't find enough water ice? The astronauts don't just fail their mission. They die slowly, knowing rescue is impossible. The power requirements alone are staggering. A nuclear reactor generating 600 kilowatts continuously. That's enough electricity to power 40 American homes, running 24-7 for over a year, in an environment more hostile than Antarctica. And if 